Hello everyone and welcome to Future News Daily, where I bring you the latest advancements in technology, longevity, science, medicine, and AI. Today is Tuesday, December 6, 2022. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bells. With that being said, let's get started. So, first up today, scientists use quantum computing to create glass that cuts the need for AC by a third. Um, quantum computing, machine learning, and contact lens polymers combine to dramatically reduce energy costs. So let's read on and see what's going on. So two researchers at the University of Notre Dame, in collaboration with South Korea's uh, Kyung Hee University, recently utilized quantum computing to help develop a new transparent window coating, which is capable of blocking solar heat. In findings published in ACS Energy Levels, Tang Fei Luo, Notre Dame's uh, Drini Family Professor of Energy Studies and postdoctoral associate Seong M. Kim worked together to devise their transparent uh, radiative cooler layer, which only permits external visible light that doesn't raise indoor temperatures, thus cutting buildings' cooling costs by uh, as much as a third of current rates. According to the International Energy Agency, air conditioning and electric fans comprise 20% of buildings' energy costs around the world, roughly 10% of human electricity consumption. To determine the absolute uh, best materials configuration, the team relied on material, machine learning and the promising field of quantum computing for a solution. Although in its relatively early phases of development, um, quantum computing offers immense potential due to its ability to far surpass traditional computing methods. Currently, even the most advanced of classical supercomputers rely on a binary state uh, representing information as ones and zeros to do all their calculations, meaning that there are limits to what they can and cannot achieve. Quantum computing, in its contrast, uh, can represent information as either one, zero, or even a combination of the two. This uh, hypothetically gives scientists a massive advantage in numerous fields such as natural science simulations and nuclear fusion research. In order for Luo and Kim's TRC design to work per uh, properly, incredibly thin layers of materials needed to be compiled in an exact way to ensure optimal heat reduction. In this case, machine learning and quantum computing teamed up to test models within fractions of a second parsing through virtually every possible mixture and material combination to find the best one. The result is a 1.2 micron thick layer of silica, alumina, and titanium oxide upon a glass base that is then coated with the same polymer used in contact lenses. The new combination subsequently outperformed every other heat reduction glass coating currently available. Quote, I think the quantum computing strategy is an important uh, is, is as important as the material itself, end quote. Uh, Lil said in a press release from the University of Notre Dame yesterday. Um, they continue uh, with the quote, uh, Using this approach, we were able to find the best in-class material, design a radiative cooler, and experimentally prove its cooling effect, um, end quote. As advancements progress, these kinds of transparent heat-reducing layers can be increasingly applied to windows and glass structures, in order to help dramatically lower energy emissions as the world races to save, stave off climate change's worst potential features. So just doing a quick um, fraction, a little, um, you know, uh, brain math real quick, a little up in the air math. Just thinking how much, uh, let's see, can you remember said? Air conditioning and air fans price 20% of building energy costs around the world. So 10% of humans' electricity is from, they say, the consumption. So if they can do 30, um, what, 3.3%? So this this um, invention has the potentiality to reduce global energy consumption by 3.3, roughly, percent, which is, you know, on a global scale that you're talking about huge amounts of energy from one, you know, discovery using quantum computers. Just to put that in perspective. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting there. Um, very promising, rather. Uh, moving on. So this one's more of a concept. 
Um, but Tesla semi home looks incredible as an electric motor home. So this is, of course, everyone's seen the the newest um, Tesla semi trucks that are really looking like a game changer. So people are saying, well, what if that base was used as you know used for a motor home? And uh, the concept looks really nice. It really does. Um, so let's read on. Um, Tesla Semi could make an awesome electric motorhome based on the specs released by Tesla this week and how incredible these renders of the electric truck look as a motorhome. There's something about the idea of an all-electric and solar-powered motorhome that is extremely attractive to many people. Um, during the day, you drive without emissions and can power your life from the same battery pack that moves you around. At night, you can charge up in order to do it all over again the next day. Uh, with solar power, you can also take the entire experience off the grid. So uh, there are a few electric motorhome projects that are looking to deliver that kind of experience to customers, but most of them are still in the concept stage or have a very limited range. Um, we recently reported on the new Mercedes-Benz e-Sprinter having impressive enough specs to potentially enable an electric van life, but what if you need or want something bigger? Um, Tesla Semi can make for an interesting platform for electric motor homes. I haven't heard about this um, e-Sprinter. I'm just going to see what this is about really quick. Oh, that looks... It's more like a commercial van. Yeah, I'm not... No, that's not the same thing at all. <laughs> anyway, um, so the team at jo, jo, Joa, an interior accessory maker, thought so... Uh, thought so while watching the unveiling of the production version of Tesla Semi this week and decided to build renders of what Tesla Semi motorhome could look like. And you see the picture here for those of you looking at the screen. Um, so the biggest problem with, the most, with most of the electric motorhome projects right now is that they have a limited range. Uh, so for example, Winnebago built its own full-size electric motorhome, but only has 125 miles of range. That is terrible. Let's see what that looks like too. Uh, yeah, looks like a regular motorhome. Nothing. <laughs> it looks kind of boring when you compare it to the Tesla, you know. And 125 miles, I mean, that's that's pretty bad. So with the unveiling of the production version of this week, uh, the production version this week, the, the of course, the Tesla Semi, Tesla confirmed that the Tesla Semi has a roughly 900 kilowatt battery pack and can travel more than 500 miles with a full load of, uh, at 82,000 pounds total. And the Tesla Semi would likely achieve an even greater range as motorhome as a motorhome, since it wouldn't be carrying 82,000 pounds around as a motorhome. Um, some of the heaviest 40-plus feet long motorhomes today weigh about 50,000, um, since uh, se Tesla Semi is heavier than most Class 8 trucks, but there should be a way to build a motorhome on the platform and keep the weight under 70,000. So you might even get up to maybe, you know, 550, 600 mile stretch over that. Um, so Joe also produced a render of the interior of their vision of a Tesla semi home. Um, a little bit different, of course, of the standard in here, but it looks looks very nice. I love this uh, all glass front. That would just be... Wow, that would be beautiful as a motorhome. It really would be. So it probably requires some cooperation from Tesla, but there should be a way to power the living features of the motorhome um, with the powertrain's battery pack. You add some deployable solar panels for when you're parked for extended periods of time, and you are in business. So they could do a couple different things with this. They could use the glass that we just talked about, <laughs> reducing the AC by a third, make it even more energy efficient, or they could use the... Um, there's some glass, I don't know, they, I can't remember who did it, but the basically solar panel glass um, that does exist, they could also do that if they wanted to. So, yeah, the technology that for for this type of truck is, is just kind of um, advancing in leaps and bounds, it seems like, you know. So, I'm sure someone, they may even do this, you know, because they already have the assembly line for it. It wouldn't be that much harder to do it. Anyway, still concept. But uh, we'll see what uh, the future holds for this. And then, like they said, if Tesla doesn't do it, other companies will decide to build electric motorhomes based on the Tesla Semi, just because they know that that model, it, you know, is feasible. Anyway, moving on. Rapamycin, not dietary restriction, fights infection in mice. So, feed a fever may be good advice. Um, not in a 
pretty short article, but I'll just uh, run through it real quick. This paper begins with the well-known information that aging impairs the immune system, harming its effectiveness against infectious diseases, while causing systemic inflammation, um, or while causing systemic inflammation, full stop. Interestingly, while both rapamycin and dietary restriction are thoroughly documented interventions against aging, high-dose rapamycin is used in clinical settings as an immunosuppressant, and there is prior evidence that, uh, that dietary restriction impedes immune function against pathogens. So this line of research has been explored many times in the past. Therefore, these researchers performed a study of studies, a true meta-analysis, in order to determine whether dietary restriction and rapamycin are helpful or harmful against infection. So while it is clear that not all of these studies agreed with each other, the researchers note that the standard black six mouse uh, and a standard 40% dietary restriction rate were common throughout. By thoroughly comparing these various studies, the researchers found that dietary restriction slightly but significantly increased the risk of pathogen infection, while rapamycin treatments uh, significantly decreased it, particularly in secondary infections. There did not seem to be evidence of publication bias, and the type of pathogen did not seem to matter. Um, however, the researchers do note that the sex of the mice, uh, a frequent confounding factor, was not reported enough to be used as part of the meta-analysis. The researchers note several aspects of these findings. Um, caloric restriction has been previously reported to youth in the immune system, such as by protecting T lymphocytes from oxidative damage. However, it decreases leptin, which has been shown to reduce the effectiveness of natural killer cells um, Rapamycin, on the other hand, other hand <laughs> increases the population of T regula uh, regulatory cells, regulatory cells, excuse me, and improves immune memory, which could explain its effectiveness against secondary infections. So, in conclusion, this meta-analysis serves as a sharp reminder that while systemic immune overactivation is a key part of age-related diseases, underactivation has its own obvious problems as well. Treatments to fight inflammation, that's a bad typo there, <laughs> need to allow the immune system to reform its original core function. Furthermore, these studies were done on mice rather than people. Practitioners of caloric restriction might also want to keep these results in mind. All right. So that, again, a quick thing, kind of doubling down on the rapamycin that we've, again, previously um, got into, again, in lower doses and higher doses, it seems to have a potentially, potentially opposite effect having um, being immunosuppressant more for anyway. I'll delve into that. Our other videos, if you want to get into that, but um, yeah, let's keep it keep it going. Next up, DeepMind unveils Stratego playing AI system. So the DeepMind division of Alphabet <laughs> Alphabet Inc. has created a new artificial intelligence system that can play the board game Stratego which is thought to be more difficult than chess and go. Um, I've never heard of this personally. Um, I'll have to look it up and see if it might be fun to play. Um, the company provided more information about the Deep Nash AI system. I guess that's what this one's called. According to the Alphabet Unit, Deep Nash won more than 84% of its games against skilled human competitors. According to DeepMind, uh, Stratego is too complex to be effectively taught by the conventional methods used to teach AI systems to play board games. DeepMind's researchers created the RNED AI technique, um, which is based on the study of game theory and mathematics to overcome that limitation. The DeepNash system that DeepMind described in the announcement is based on that methodology. Deep Nash allegedly creates a strategy for winning Stratego games by simulating a so-called Nash equilibrium. Hmm, so I guess I'll have to click to read more. See, that's not a very good explanation there. Um, here we are. So, in Stratego, each player has only limited information about the other player's game pieces. A player might know that the other player has placed a game piece on a certain section of the board, but not which specific game piece was placed there. This dynamic makes playing the game difficult for AI systems. Oh, another complexity is that there are more possibilities to consider than in chess. The number of uh, potential tactics that players can use in a board game 
is measured with a metric known as the game tree complexity number. Chess has a game tree complexity number of 10 to the power of 123, while Stratigo, um, with Stratigo, that number increases to 10 to the power of 535. So that's, wow, a lot more. Um, according to DeepMind, traditional methods of teaching AI systems to play board games can't be applied to Stratigo because of this complexity. Um, to address that limitation, they develop new methods. I don't explain too much into what those new methods are. Um, maybe it's proprietary or pff, too complicated to really explain in uh, layman's terms. Um, by studying what would happen, etc., to achieve the new term. Well, let's just skip to the bottom. DeepMind believes that the AI techniques it developed to build Deep Nash could be applied to other tasks besides playing Stratego. According to the Alphabet Unit, the AI system's ability to develop an optimal course of action in complex situations could potentially be applied in fields such as traffic management. Um, quote, we also hope RNAD can help unlock new applications of AI in domains that feature a large number of human or AI participants with different goals that might not have information about the intention of others or what's occurring in their environment. So I guess that's the main differentiator or complexity here is that it, it's able to analyze or, I guess, create probabilities um, on things that they don't have the like, full or it's basically conjecture on um, what they don't know, what the other players are doing, what's going on in their environment entirely. Um, so... Hmm. One more than 97% of matches according to the alpha. Another out evaluation achieved 84%. Hmm. So I guess we'll be seeing more studies on this and other applications for this type of AI in the future as well. I'm going to have to learn about this game. <laughs> Seems like. Um, moving on. So this one quite interesting. Following up on, um, so we did talk about this earlier, but I think it was by a different company. Um, so newly developed cutting edge walking robot may revolutionize future space missions. So yeah, this one looks entirely different from the one that I remember seeing, but we did talk, they were talking about it being this, you know, 2023. So it's right on, on schedule at least. So scientists have built a cutting edge walking robot that might transform huge space building projects. They assess the robot's suitability for the in-space installation of a 25-meter-large aperture space telescope. That is a huge telescope. Their findings are published in Frontiers in Robots and AI. A scaled-down version of the robot has shown potential for large-scale building applications on Earth. So maintenance and repair of massive structures are especially important in orbit, where the circumstances are harsh and modern technology has a limited lifespan. Extravehicular activities, uh, which are activities performed by an astronaut outside of the spacecraft, and robotics, including autonomous system solutions, have proven beneficial for maintenance and servicing missions, as well as assisting the space community in conducting groundbreaking research on numerous space missions. So um, this is this picture here is the new Honda robot um, called Asimo as it walks upstairs during a North American educational tour designed to introduce the public to ASIMO and to encourage students to study robotics um, since, oh, science change. Oh, wait, this was 2003? This, <laughs> why would they even have this picture up here? Um, blah, 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 blah. is a product of over 15 years of robotic development at Honda and was created for the purpose of helping people in need. This can't be from 2003. There's no freaking way to study robotic science. Maybe that's when they were starting this project. Anyway, for those of you looking at the screen, this, this, it looks like a robot astronaut walking up some steps, but there's no way that's, there's no way that's 2003. Robotics, as well as autonomous systems advancements, provide a wide range of in-space services based on frontiers, the production, assembly, management, uh, astronomy, Earth observation, including debris removal, are all examples. Even with numerous hazards involved, depending um, just on human constructors is insufficient, and present technology is becoming obsolete. So to maintain the existing and rising orbital ecology, we need to bring sustainable futuristic technologies as per the corresponding researcher, Manu Nair, a doctoral candidate from the University of Lincoln. As the size of space missions expands, 
more substantial infrastructure in orbit is required. Um, production missions in orbit would be one of the most important roles in satisfying the growing demand. Nair, with his colleagues, presented a new, agile, strolling robotic system that may be employed for in-orbit assembly missions in their study. The researchers used the robot to assemble a 25-meter large aperture space telescope as an instance. Um, but since the deployment of the Hubble Space Telescope, as well as its descendant, the James Webb Space Telescope, the worldwide space community has been steadily pushing toward the deployment of larger and more powerful observatories with wider dimensions. Um, due to the limiting dimensions of our present launch vehicles, it is not viable to assemble large telescopes on Earth, including a 25 millimeter uh, LAST, which is the Large Aperture Space Telescope. They love these acronyms. <laughs> um, as a result, bigger telescopes should ideally be built in orbit. As per Nair, the potential of the LAST commissioning in orbit has fueled both academic and commercial interest in deep space astrophysics and Earth observation. Researchers need the necessary tools to build an uh, observatory of that size and space. Um, although typical spacewalking robotics candidates are agile, their agility is limited. As a result, upcoming in-orbit walking robot concepts must have mobility characteristics to provide access to a much greater workspace without sacrificing dexterity. So e-walker robots, what they have down here, I don't think, I don't know if that's it or not. The authors analyzed a uh, completely dexterous edge walking robot with seven degrees of freedom um, a limbed robotic machine that can travel over a platform to various places to ensure that the tasks have seven degrees of moving capabilities or an e-walker. So I guess this is, it looks kind of like like a drone with kind of wheels on it. So it can, I, don't, I don't think I'm allowed to play this video, but if you want to Google or YouTube this, you know, free, feel free, of course. Um, so Science Tech Daily reported that the scientists carried out an extensive design and engineering uh, exercise to verify the robot's ability to effectively build a 25-meter last in space. The robot was compared to the International Space Station's current Canada Arm 2 and European Robotic Arm. A scaled-down model for Earth analog testing was also created, as well as other design engineering exercise. Following the research findings, the suggested evolutionary e-walker design is adaptable and excellent option for upcoming in-orbit missions. According to Nair, the e-walker will be capable of prolonging the life cycle of a spacecraft by performing routine maintenance as well as servicing missions after assembly in orbit. Based on the examination of the scaled-down prototype, it is also an excellent contender for repairing, maintenance, and assembly tasks on Earth, such as performing routine maintenance on wind turbines. Notwithstanding, much remains to be discovered. The study was confined to the design engineering examination of an e-walker, full-scale, and prototype model. Um, Nair noted that while the e-walker prototype work is now underway at the University of Lincoln, the actual verification and validation would be released independently. Alrighty, so that is the last article I have for you today. Um, don't forget this video is for educational purposes only. I will never recommend any investments, solicit your time or money, attempt to contact you on any other platform, or own any rights to the information within this content. With that being said, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in the next one.